Hi, I'm Seben Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Comparison of Two Switched Capacitor Converters and the Different, Similar, or Identical. Switched Capacitor Converters are used for low power conversion of DC to DC uh, voltages. Now, the advantages are that there is no need for an inductor, so EMI as far as the radiation is lower. They are of small size because you can use ceramic capacitors, which are really a very small size and high capacitance. Uh, they can be bidirectional, that is from input to output and vice versa, either step up or step down. Uh, there are quite a number of ICs which are available, so you can just put some capacitors around it and you can get your own uh, DC to DC converter and they are of fairly high efficiency. Unfortunately, the high efficiency is obtained at specific voltage gain. That is, these converters are really not highly efficient when you need a variable gain. If the gain is fixed, then you can get a fairly high efficiency. Now, this presentation actually compares two switch capacitor converters with a voltage gain of two. The first switch capacitor converter we're going to consider has this topology, this structure. We have here the input voltage. This is an input capacitor for just capturing the ripple. There are four switches, which of course will be implemented by MOSFETs. There is a capacitor, which we call a flying capacitor, which, because it is connected in different configurations. And then we have the output side with the output filter, and this actually RN represent the load. Now these switches are turned on in pairs, that is S11 and S12 are turned on at the same time, and then S21 and S22 are again turned on at the same time. Now there is of course a dead time between the operation of the switches to, such that there would be no short circuit let's say in this path. So this circuit, the way it operates, let's start with uh, the operation of S11 and S12, which operate together. We see that in fact, this switching sequence is connecting C sub F, the flying capacitor in parallel to the input. So this capacitor will be eventually uh, charged to the input voltage. And then at the second phase, uh, this capacitor by virtue of S21 and S22, it is connected in series with the input to the output so that the output now sees the input volt voltage plus the voltage across C sub F. And since the voltage across C sub S is already V in, then we get twice the input voltage. So this is a step up voltage doubler converter. Now the other converter that I'm going to look at is uh, has this topology. Uh, it's sometimes called a ladder type converter because it has a structure of a ladder. And it, as we will see, this capacitor is connected uh, to one capacitor here, then to this capacitor here. Again, we do have the input side. We have, you might call this an input filter. And then this is the flying capacitor. And again, I'm assuming that S11 and S12 are operated together, as well as S21 and S22, again, will be operating together. And in the, again, we do need a dead time between them, so there'll be no short circuit. So the operation of this circuit is sort of similar to what we've seen before. S12 and S11 are now turned on. So the capacitor C sub F, the flying capacitor is connected in parallel to the input. So it will be charged to the input voltage. And in this case, we are connecting the flying capacitor in the second phase here when S22 and S21 are turned on, we are connecting it in parallel to S to C2. So since C sub F is charged to V in, uh, eventually C2 will be charged to V in. 
and we have now V in plus V in, so V out is again twice V in. So this is again a doubler, and the output voltage, voltage is twice the input voltage. Now the question is, is there a difference between these two? So if I look at this ladder type converter, and I redraw it a little bit different, I sort of pull these wires like this, here it is, and then redraw it a little bit, I'm getting this thing here. This is now very similar to the first uh, converter that we've seen, except that rather than having the capacitor here at the output, we have this capacitor now connected between the output and the input. Here it is between output and ground, and here it is between uh, output and input. In fact, if you look at this one, we have, you might say, if we take this capacitor and move it to the output, like here, this capacitor here was moved here, we get the same thing. So basically, these are very, very similar converters, uh, except for the fact that in one case, the output capacitor is connected to ground, and in this case, it is connected uh, back to the input, uh, forming this sort of ladder, you might say, uh, configuration. So the question is, of course, which one would be better? I mean, if we can use this one and this one, the number of switches is the same, number of capacitors is the same. That is, the total number of components is exactly the same. And we have the option of either building it this way or that way. Now, the first thing that we see immediately, of course, is that while in this configuration, the output capacitor is connected between the output and ground, and here we have twice V in. Here it is connected between V out and this point, so the voltage across C sub 2 is only V in. So there is a clear difference between these two in that this capacitor now has to be uh, specified to a higher voltage as compared to this capacitor. Well, in many cases, this may not be a big issue especially if we are talking about low voltages, but at high voltages, this might be an issue. Well, in high voltages, you might be, have a problem with the switches, etc. But this is a real difference between these two. But there are other issues which perhaps are more important, and these are the losses and the ripples which are involved in this case. The ripple and the losses are affected by the parasitic resistances which we have switches, MOSFET, while they are on, have a RDS on, this is a residual resistance. Uh, we have a ESR, equivalent series resistance of the capacitors. And we would have some impedance between this input capacitor and the input voltage because there are some lines here, the traces on the PC board. So this is really not a a zero short circuit here, but there is some impedance in between. Of course, we have it both in this configuration and in this configuration. While doing a analytic or theoretical analysis uh, is possible, but it is rather very complicated because of the many sub-circuits that you have and the parasitic resistances, etc. So the best way, of course, is uh, to do the comparison by simulation. And I've been using the PSIM uh, program uh, software, which is kind of easy uh, to use for switch mode systems. Now I'm assuming for the sake of simulation, because in simulation we do need numbers, uh, that V in is five volt. The output at no load, this is the target voltage, V sub T is 10 volt. I'm assuming a load of 4 ohm, and this would mean that the nominal power would be 25 watts because we have V square over 4, 100 over 4, which is uh, 25 watts. We also assume in this simulation that the capacitor are 100 microfarads and that the parasitic resistances uh, all over are 1 milliohm. This is perhaps practical. 
with good transistors and ceramic capacitor, we might get these values. This is per element, okay? And also in this first simulation, I'm assuming that this impedance between the input and the first capacitor is 50 nanohenry. This will be just a piece of wire or traces of a PCB board. And the same thing, of course, goes here. So I'm going to compare this one to this one by PCM simulation. So the first thing that I've done here is to look at the output ripple. So this is the ripple at the output. Here it is for this one. And here is the ripple for this one at the output. Uh, the scales are just about the same. So we see just by eyeballing that the ripple here is larger than here. There's no question about that. Now, we see here this drop, and this drop is due to the fact that in this configuration, we have a situation in which this capacitor is connected to the input, while this capacitor, C sub 2, is supplying the voltage or the current to the load. At this time, the voltage of C sub 2 will drop, and here we see the drop. This is when this capacitor here is connected uh, to the in series with the input feeding the load. Okay, so this is this portion here. Here we see more ripple. The reason is that when looking here at V out, we still we see the ripple across. C sub 2, that is when this capacitor is connected to C sub 2, but we also see here the ripple across C sub 1, which is penetrating through C sub 2, that is when C sub S is back to be parallel to C sub 1, uh, there is a disturbance here, and we see it here, so this is why we see in both cases quite a disturbance, this is during the charging. This uh, hump here is due to the fact that we have an inductive uh, link here, and this is sort of a partial um, resonant here uh, with this inductor. Now, looking now at the actual voltages that we see at the output, here we see something like 9.85. Remember, the target is 10 volt. So we see 9.85. This is the average voltage. While here, we see 9.7, say, 3 or 2, which is lower. And in fact, the efficiency, it can be shown, is this output voltage divided by the target voltage. In our case, it's 10 volt. This is the 10 volt. So if I calculate the efficiency here, just dividing it by 10, I find that in this case, we get 98.4 percent efficiency while here it's only 97 per 2 so it's well it's one percent it's quite a bit however if i replace this inductor with a resistor and i'm assuming again one milliohm here and here the situation looks different and also the waveform looks different i don't see here now this resonant phenomena i see that's just the charging and discharging Again, the ripple here looks a little bit higher than here. This is again about the same scale, but it's mainly these sharp peaks, the very, very high frequency, the charging, uh, while here they are shorter. Uh, and the main ripple here is not too different from the main ripple here. Again, when I compare, however, the output voltage here, this is 9.793, and lo and behold, it's also here very, very similar, 9.72 or 3. So the difference in this case with this 1 milliohm is not that big, it's just about the same. This looks a little bit more dirty than these spikes here, which is unpleasant to see here. You would need some more, uh, maybe. Uh, filtering, uh, but otherwise these two are the same. So the conclusion is that a parasitic element affects very much the behavior of the circuit. Now I have just considered uh, this 
link here, but all other lines would also have some parasitic uh, components to them, uh, like resistances and inductances, the traces here. So in actual construction of this converter with these uh, practical traces on the board, uh, the situation might be different and it will be very difficult actually to simulate it unless you have a very, very good model of your uh, PCB. So this is the lesson that we can learn from this little exercise here. But in general, we see that these two are very similar, but I would say that except for the fact that the output capacitor here has a higher voltage on it, this probably uh, would be preferred. Having a look now at the input ripple, we see that there is also a difference. I'm now again with this link of 50 nano Henry here. And it's interesting to see that the frequency here is twice the frequency that we see here, the major uh, component. Now the situation here is a bit different as we can see because uh, we have a charging from the input to this C sub one both when this capacitor is connected here, we charge it, and also when C sub F is connected here because we again draw some current to the output. So we have a charging during these two uh, times, and then when CF comes back from here to here, we have a large jump because C sub F is now partially. Uh, discharged and it is now charged again uh, by C sub 1. So this is this sharp charm. So there is a difference here and uh, the amplitude is not too much different. Here it's a little bit larger, but the fact that this is a higher frequency is of course better because it's easier to filter out. Let me now turn to a, another aspect, and that is the target voltage and the output resistance. A way to describe a switch capacitor converter is by this very simple model. This V sub T is the no load uh, voltage. In our case, it would be 10 volt. R out is the output resistance, the equivalent output resistance. And this actually represents the load. This is now a DC circuit. This is DC and we have sort of a DC current in this model. Now this V sub T, of course, is uh, a function of the V in and depending on the topology in our case, N is equal to two. Now, from this circuit, we understand that V out is in fact a V sub T uh, times this voltage divider, here it is, and as I've already said, the efficiency is in fact the ratio between the output voltage and the target voltage, which comes to be this ratio. Now, from here, we can actually calculate R out if we know the efficiency and we know R amp. And here it is, and it turns out that R out is R sub L times one minus uh, the efficiency times the efficiency. And in our case, it was say around 0.98 and the RL was four ohm. And we find that the output resistance in our case is about 80 million. Notice that uh, the 80 million is quite a bit higher than this individual resistances of one million that we had. Of course, we have a number of these in series, but still this is one million and here this is 80 million. Then the reason for that is that the waveforms that these resistances are seeing uh, are of high RMS value because of the ripple and the peaks. So therefore, uh, it actually generates higher losses and therefore the equivalent output resistance is uh, fairly high as compared to this elemental resistance. So this actually brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you have found it interesting and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you.